coming on and the um here comes nancy um it is being recorded by us and it is also being recorded by orca media so i think that we can start and people that are joining late will still have the ability to go back and see what um what transpired so um from the folks that are here do we have any additions to the agenda tonight Okay. I'd like to know about the um, if we have a dog catcher. Dog catcher. Um, all right. Sorry, who asked that? I could because I can't see. That was Susan. Um, Susan. Susan Morse. M O R C. Okay. Thank you. No. Right. Uh, that, that's vacant right now, dude. Yeah, that it, it is. Yeah. So, um, are we, we going to be talking about community distancing? Um, yes, that's yes. Good. So, we did our um, best to post this um, physically in three places and warned it on our website and emailed instructions to interesting parties, and it was posted on Front Porch forum and Facebook and this is um this is an experiment as you all know this is our first virtual select board meeting which is um come because of the the virus situation and our need for um social distancing so this is we enacted this with the understanding that the legislature is I thought that they had made an adjustment to the open meeting law that would allow a meeting to happen without a physical spot for people to come it turns out that is a proposal and they haven't they haven't finalized that so legally by vermont rules we can't have an official meeting like this but um, in the nature of doing what we believe needs to happen to protect the community in this situation we're going ahead and and having this meeting virtually and i believe that within days that will be legally permissible and if we have to have another special meeting to ratify any decisions we make at this meeting to make them binding then we, we will do so but um i think you'll agree at least all of you that are here that this is the the proper decision there's no reason to to sit someone in the town office to um share germs with anyone um so that said we're gonna um move on as if this was a normal meeting and we've already asked for additions to the agenda we're going to bring up the prior meeting minutes and the first was the pre-town meeting and pat was not at the last meeting so and at the other one so we needed two so it's between pat and i to approve the minutes for the pre-town meeting that February 24th. Pat, you approve those? I have read them and I, I approve them. I second it. All right. I and I, I also, so I'll move we pass those or accept those as typed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. And then we go to the February, which was the regular select board meeting um, following the pre-town meeting. And the uh, same thing i would um move that we accept those minutes as presented a second and vote aye and voting aye and doing you you weren't there the yet on that one. Oh, that's the right next okay. one that you get to do sorry right. about that so i move we uh overzealous minutes <laughs> now the next meeting minutes which was on uh, the march 9th meeting and that's me and frank pat you weren't there so frank now i would enter a uh, um a motion to accept those uh, minutes as as presented i second that all right and there we go all in favor aye aye all right so we've got the minutes um the minutes from the town meeting the actual town meeting do we need to approve those i think that um i don't see them no on the um I don't see them on the agenda, and I would, Julie, do you know about that? Do we have some meetings for the town, the town, main uh, town meeting? We don't yet, no. No, all right. What's, what's holding those up? 
Everything. Uh, <laughs> well, well, if it helps, it was in the Herald. <laughs> Those aren't your official minutes, though, of course. It was asked at the last meeting on March 9th uh, when they would be put up on our website. Oh, OK. I just it, need to get Dan's signature, and I'll have those all sent. OK, we're waiting on that's right, because Dan is the one that, that re, OK, so we'll have to check with Dan on that. OK. All right, all right, good. Um, we've got no Joan here tonight, um, so I guess we won't get any updates from her or the library. I don't see Cooter here. And to Terry, we're getting rapidly down to what we're all here to talk about is the um, um, adopting the 2020 local hazard mitigation plan. And Vic, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Sure. So um, we have a document uh, called the local hazard mitigation plan. This is a plan that the town has had in the past and it has a life of I think five years as a span and then it, it has to be renewed if you want to maintain eligibility for FEMA reimbursement. So there are specifications for the doc, for the plan document that have to satisfy FEMA requirements. Um, we received a grant last year to um, have uh, professional planning assistance help our emergency management committee uh, put a new plan together and uh, so we use that grant to retain two rivers. They provided staff to the committee, uh, the committee composed of myself as chair, uh, Cooter, Terry Severy, uh, Jan McCann, Rob Gardner, and Pat Harvey. Uh, we met several times over the, between summer and uh, uh, winter and uh, reviewed uh, the, what we had in the past. We considered various criteria uh, for how we might uh, update through the plan. Uh, and uh, the overall idea is uh, to uh, help us identify all the hazards faced in the town, rank them, identify, identify strategies to reduce risk from known priority hazards like flash floods, severe weather, cold, snow, extreme heat, uh, things of that nature. Uh, so we went through that process, generated several drafts, uh, sent it to the state, um, emergency management office uh, where it was reviewed and uh, they came back with uh, some suggestions for improvement to be more aligned with uh, FEMA requirements. We did all that and, uh, and then uh, we got a clean bill uh, the last time around in December, I think it was. And so uh, the next step is to uh, present it to the select board, receive their approval, and uh, then it can be sent off to the state and the state will send it on to FEMA and then we will be eligible for FEMA reimbursement if there's another disaster. It does not speak specifically to uh, uh, coronavirus, any other pandemic. This was an issue that was just not on the radar when we were putting this plan together and perhaps in an amendment at some point or in a future edition, we'll need to add that in. But this would, this would be satisfactory in terms of meeting uh, FEMA requirements at, at this time. Um, so, so the document's about 55 pages long. Uh, Martha sat in on at least meetings and reported down at the paper. All the meetings were warned appropriately. And uh, so there's been opportunity to review it. Uh, so let me just stop there and see if anybody has any questions. Now, thank you for, um, for that uh, synopsis and um, like I said earlier, since it's questionable to what extent we can take binding action meeting, I would, I would still propose that we we had this um, this plan, and then we can come back and reaffirm that adoption um, in the future once they've um, you know, legitimized this meeting format. So I, I'd entertain a vote now to adopt this plan. Do I have a second? I second that. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. That's, I um, think that in this situation, there has to be a, a roll call. So that's um, Pat, you're saying aye. Aye. Yep. And Frank, you're saying aye. And I, I am I'm saying aye, just so it's identified who's voting in that situation. Well, excuse me, Doom. I want to, excuse me, Doom. Yep. 
Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I want to make sure I get this worded correctly. I was saying Dune proposed that the board adopt the plan um, provisionally until um, and, and after and after um, until they get a, a, a formal approval from the state to do um, the virtual meetings and then go back and do a, 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 a approve it again. Is that correct? Well, we won't need to approve it again. I believe we can just ratify the decisions that we're making in public now and just to make sure that all bases are covered. Maybe totally fine, but just to, you know, we'll, we'll come back and, cause this is, um, that's an important thing to have and we don't want to mess it up. Okay, so if I said, do you propose the board adopt the plan and then act to ratify that after the-, um, the, the After the virtual meeting format is legitimized. Thank you, I just want to make sure I get that correct and yeah. don't make trouble for you guys. No, no, that's that's all right. That's that's why I want to get it. So that was really the 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 meat of the uh, agenda tonight. Other than the the elephant in the in the town about um, in this in Burma, you brought up what are we going to be doing about um, you know social distancing in town? This um, we have ready to. In the mail, the second in the series of town mailers, which is going to provide about the town's response to COVID-19. And it's because it's a definitely a, a rapidly changing situation. And it's, I mean, increasingly urgent that people adhere to safety guidelines for social distancing by staying home and ceasing non-essential outings. And Dr. Erwin Lang of Gifford Medical Center has met with us when I say us. Uh, Force that is dealing with this, and that is comprised of myself and Rob Gardner, and Vic Rubato, and Catherine Shankman. And um, Vic, do you want to um, speak to the structures and the different sure. roles that we're all playing in that? Sure, sure. So, uh, part of the scope responsibility of the Emergency Management Committee is to address uh, uh, unforeseen uh, uh, incidents like this, and so we created a small task force that uh, Dune just uh, identified, and we created a structure to go with it. Our overall mission is to organize the efforts to lessen the suffering of folks in Rochester as a result of this uh, coronavirus pandemic, and uh, uh, collaborate with local, state, federal organizations to do the same. And, and uh, so the, we've created a, a, a very simple table of organization uh, where we have uh, an incident commander, I've, I've played that role as the convener of the group and uh, uh, helping to ensure that we stay on task. Rob Gardner is working as our communications chief where he's creating and executing uh, uh, communications plans. He's putting good information up on the web to uh, drive the uh, the mailer that uh, dude uh, just uh, referenced and uh, is taking uh, in inf questions from public and is, is uh, uh, triaging them and sorting them out and getting answers to folks as questions come up. Uh, uh, Dune, is, uh, he's, he's coordinating to make sure that our town uh, services remain uh, functioning. You know, we don't know how long this thing is going to last, and we have critical services that the town provides to the residents, and so uh, he's uh, focused on, on that. Um, and then Catherine Shankman has, has put together a, a team, uh, including uh, uh, Paula Doherty, uh, Peggy McKinley, uh, Jan McCann, and I think maybe someone else I, I might be forgetting. Anyway, looking at uh, elder and family services issues that might arise. And then Sue Rubato is focused on uh, food uh, security. And she's been working with us people to create a volunteer service where uh, people who are isolated, uh, either they're... Um, uh, been been told to take self-isolation to determine whether or not they have the virus or if they're a vulnerable person like a, a senior person and, and shouldn't be out shopping for groceries. They've, they've created, Sue and her group have created a system uh, to shop for and deliver groceries to people who can't or shouldn't go out and, and do this themselves. And that's scheduled to launch next Monday. Uh, and you'll be hearing and seeing more about that soon. 
So we're trying to anticipate uh, what the urgent needs are and, and what's coming down the pike. But as everybody knows, there's a lot of unknowns here. Uh, we just keep reiterating the message that uh, Burma identified as we got started, that the social distancing is really, really important. And, and as uh, one of the doctors at Gifford said to me, if it's not a pain in the rear end, you ain't doing it right. <laughs> you gotta, you, you really gotta be diligent about it. And uh, it's difficult, but the alternative is a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. Can I make a comment? Sure. That um, in terms of what you just laid out, I, I know that uh, more tests will be done in the future and possibly more people in our community are going to be tested. But there is no uniform information regarding post-testing and actions of people while they're waiting to get their results from their tests. And I'm afraid that, that because there's no uniform way, every doctor and their patient have their own personal relationship, people will be going out before they get their test results not knowing whether they're positive uh, and I, I foresee that this could be a problem in our community. And I wonder how best to address this. Uh, probably through public communication. Uh, is Rob still on the line? Do you want to speak to that if you're there, Rob? Yeah. Rob. Yeah. Rob is, yeah. Uh, you hear now? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, it's important to keep in mind that we're not the police and we're not, uh, you know, we don't have the power to chase people back into their houses or anything like that. Um, I think all, all the, I think that we can do is to continue to communicate with the tools we have, which right now are Facebook front page forum, physical mailers, and the town website. Uh, and then a lot of people are sharing this stuff and moving the stuff around. Uh, this, the single most important message that I'm repeating over and over again on the on the on the stuff that we put out is this business of staying in, staying inside, isolating yourself, because it's not only your safety that we're talking about, or the safety of the person that you might infect, survival of the hospital upon which we all right. uh, and they're in trouble at like hospitals all across. So that's just a message that we can repeat mixed in together with what you know things that are going on or canceled in town or whatever. Well, I was just wondering if maybe in the letter that goes out, um, people could be reminded that um, it's important to wait for your test results. Yeah, we can do that. The, the letter has has been posted. The text has been posted on these different uh, internet sites now, uh, and I guess yeah, it's, right now the letter is focusing on on um, <clears throat> symptoms and testing and reducing the hospital surge and tips for caregivers caring for a person with the virus and cleaning and preventing the spread and um, um, simple just simple prevention tips and then also pointing out that we are putting together the volunteer team to help shop and deliver groceries to people that are quarantined or, or in, um, self isolated so that's that's the the gist of what this letter, this immediate letter is going out, and it's um, and you're that's a good point, Burma, to that that could be folded into um, you know, following letters is that that the importance of, of I mean, really, everyone just should just assume that they have it and act accordingly. Can I uh, chime in just real quick? Um, if people are interested, and Rob, I'll bring this up with you later, but Dan and I have gotten tested already. We are negative, but I could write up a, a short brief thing on how we went about it, how, what we were instructed to do and how we were instructed to act just as something kind of personalized, maybe for the Facebook page or something else. Informationally, it might help people kind of understand this happened to folks in our town and here's what they went through and here's how they acted. That's great, Lizzie. So Lizzie, yeah, yeah. Lizzie I have a question. Sure. You and Dan got, got tested. Did you have, did you get tested because you felt you had symptoms or was it because you travel internationally or what we had just come back to a trip where we both went to italy oh, okay. um yeah. and then dan had a high fever so we checked all the boxes yeah. that makes sense okay right. i just wondered can you post it somewhere else besides facebook for those who don't do facebook i can i can put it on front porch forum too i've been copying a lot of the things 
if anybody has other ideas of you know useful places to share the information stuff, so we're happy to add more options. Yeah, Lizzie has been been uh, volunteering to repost with the stuff from uh, from the one platform to the other, which is a big pain in the butt, and uh, she's been very helpful in that. I think that's a great idea, uh, Lizzie, to do that. Also, uh, Burma, you can send me a note saying what you think, and I'll put, I'll write it into a post and put it up tomorrow. Whatever you okay. think, write it down. I mean, I'll do the best I can to format it and put it up there right away. Anybody else too? Uh, Rob, I want to say that how much I've enjoyed the uh, Rochester, uh, I guess it's a community, I guess it's called the community website that you've been using. You've been posting so much about coronavirus on. Community, right. bulletin. community bulletin board, pardon me. Anyway, it's it's very well done and and um, very much appreciated. Thanks. Uh, can I, uh, uh, we're going to continue to mail out something every once in a while about the updates on this thing. That's our thought now. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if it would be weekly, or, but, um, but yeah. What kind of precautions are you going to have for the people delivering this, the food and everything, and doing the shopping? Are you well, going to have precautions on that? Yeah, they'll we'll provide them. Uh, first of all, instructions about how to stay safe and and not have real direct con not have direct contact with the people who are receiving the goods. They basically, leave it on the doorstep. And uh, still give them uh, gloves and, and masks. Uh, we have a supply of them we can use for that purpose. And make sure that the people who are doing this uh, are uh, not in the uh, higher risk categories, even though some of people, those people would like to do this. Yeah. OK. I also um, noticed that there was a group of people playing basketball a Sunday afternoon down Mm -hmm. and uh, there were cars there as well so there were adults who were driving them there to play i didn't uh take any police action rob <laughs> <laughs> they were several hours i saw them and i I, right. I i felt like i couldn't go down and say anything because it but it, it bothered me and i mentioned it to somebody so oh well yeah i mean it's gonna happen um it's just you know, I, I don't want to expose myself by going to a group of strangers. And I think know, maybe I, they, all I could think of was that maybe they thought it was OK because they were all outside and in fresh air. But even so, they were playing with a basketball, passing the ball back and forth between each other. And, the, and they were all being close to each other while doing so, which I don't know. I had seen something about that on um, one of the websites about how that would, definitely wasn't a good idea. So. So I posted a thing uh, in response to that because a couple of people contacted me about it, and I used the event as a kind of a platform to talk further about why we to do that. But I got some negative feedback and private messages from people in town who were just kind of disgruntled that I guess I was presuming authority or something like that. You you can see that that, that not everybody is on board with the whole idea that you need to be responsible. You know, it irritates some people. Not you know here in the entire country. So. Uh, I don't know what to do about that, except for every single person to try to be as personally responsible as they can. Some people aren't going to do it. I, I I witnessed that. I was walking the dog out in the back, and I didn't approach them. But my um, my intuition or sense about it was that it looked like a group. They're probably already, if they're infecting each other by playing ball i think they're probably already had infected each other by driving together i, I don't think they were locals i think it might be someone that has is retreated to a house in town perhaps and just getting out and playing so i you know to i don't think we can just you know ban everyone from from no, I didn't recognize any of them. Yeah, I didn't either. And I, I, I didn't. It seems to me it was a New York plate on a car. So, I, I, my sense was this was a, a group, and they were there as a group. I don't think it was just a gathering of, of stray people playing. I think that was a group that arrived together and was playing together, and then they probably all left together too. So, um, it's we're gonna we're gonna have that. We have um, there's definitely been an influx of people. Um, coming to to homes in our area to to ride out the storm as it may be. 
they have closed playgrounds in our area. They've posted signs. Mm -hmm. Someone was trying to talk, but I couldn't quite hear them. But anyway, that, um, yeah, you know, what are you going to do? We um, have to do the best we can and try and educate people. That's um, probably not a bad idea to put up a sign at the, you know, down there, but it's, you know, could. Does anyone else have any anything else and other concerns, things they'd like to contribute? I was just wondering if uh, Vic, uh, was there a, a telephone meeting today with the emergency committee? No, uh, we had one uh, large group meeting uh, a week ago or so, and uh, we tried doing that by a conference call and it just didn't work very well. Um, and we also felt that a smaller group could be a little more nimble in terms of making decisions, getting things done, pulling in the right people. And so that's, uh, so we went to just the smaller group of uh, Dune, Rob, uh, Catherine, Sue, and, and myself. And then we pull in other expertise as we need it, like Dr. Lang or uh, Jan McCann or Terry Severy as the case may be. So uh, and that's, that's, that's we, that seems to be working okay. Okay, so you had that smaller meeting. So um, in your update, that included whatever discussion came from the smaller meeting. Yeah. I, I often, uh, after a meeting, I make a little paragraph about what happened in the meeting pretty brief and post it on uh, Facebook and the front. Lizzie posted on front page form. It's not like the minutes, but it, it gives a sense of what the key things were that happened in the meeting. And I do that people and to give people the idea that the lights are on in the town and the, you know we're still paying attention mm -hmm. well um i guess we're um we're in it and we're gonna keep moving forward i i think there are a lot of times when living in a in a small town like rochester really has a lot of challenges economically and, and and socially, and in this situation, it's, I, I believe that our small size is gonna really be to our benefit in terms of the, it will, it helps, it helps the social distancing. I mean, because as someone said, uh, oh, social distancing, isn't that what it means to live in Vermont? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <I> was <laughs> you know, I heard someone comment the other day that, oh, this this uh, pandemic is just like going through Irene. And I thought, no, it's not because through Irene, nobody was dying. And also, if someone was sad and upset during Irene, we all hugged each other and you can't mm. do that now. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I do, I do think um, it's wonderful to see how our committees are working so hard to make things happen. Like for example, Sue Roboto's thing with the grocery deliveries for people. And I mean, that's, that's one of the wonderful things about living in a small town in Vermont. Mm -hmm. I think uh, people, I've gotten a lot of kind uh, comments on the Facebook page, you know, appreciating me, but I'm only the most uh, visible volunteer of a whole lot of people. You know, all, all the Sue's people, uh, Catherine's got a whole social service team put together. Uh, everybody has been working as much as they can within the confines we have. And I think it's really something to be proud of. I, I think it's quite touching. I agree. You could say, stay home, stop the spread, save lives. Yeah, that's short and sweet. Okay. Well, you will all be getting a, um, a fairly scary detailed letter in the mail, um, you know, with uh, specific um, recommendations and, and advice. And that will not be the last one. And um, we'll um, move forward. It's, um, it's challenging times and that's uh, we're going to deal with it. Um, uh in terms of other business susan we don't have a designated dog catcher right now did you have a, a situation in mind did you have a problem with the dog 
No, I was just wondering if we don't have a designated dog catcher um, and considering just people having difficult times with being laid off, et cetera, that would it be possible to consider not having the dog licensing fees since there's no one to do anything about them anyhow and just put um, that on? That's, I, I don't think that's, I, I think that the dog licensing is, is um, regardless of not having a dog catcher, they're two separate separate issues. It's really a matter of verifying that um, dogs are properly vaccinated and, and just knowing where they are. And, and um, you know, even though we don't have someone as a, the animal control officer at this point now, um, when we do, or if even just a, a citizen finds a stray dog, it'd be nice if it has a, a tag on it and it's licensed, then it's easy to track down and I mean, take it home. So, I, right. I, um, yeah, so I think we'll keep that, um, we'll, we need to keep that. that well, what, it, what is that money going for if there's not a dog catcher then? I mean, I just, that, I agree that the dog should be licensed, but uh, what, what's the fee for them? I don't think that specifically offsets the cost of the human officer. That is basically just, um, just a fee for the processing and the paperwork that needs to be filed and probably to buy the little metal medallions. You know, it's not a, not a large fee, but it's a- Isn't that a state requirement, June? I think it probably is, yeah. Yeah, the state gets part, the state gets part of them. The state gets part of all the fees license. Yes. <laughs> I don't do cats, no. Um, got that. All right. Um, does anyone have anything else that they'd like to talk about tonight? Or um, I think we know what the, the main topic is and and we'll um, we'll con continue on. Um, this for the foreseeable future, this may be the um, the venue that we um, that we use to do this. I'm finding that this experience worked very well compared to the the conference call we tried last week. I've been able to understand um, everything everyone has tried to say, and um, I believe that in Zoom it is possible to just join um, with a phone. You don't need to be on a um, computer, but I think the invite the information. The information goes out via an email. Um, there is, um, but if you get the, yeah, there is. Um, it's definitely helpful to have a computer, and this is the first one of these meetings I've ever run on this. So Rob has done it a handful of times. I'm sure that we'll have some people that are a little um, frustrated that they felt left out of this, but we'll. Um, um, it's not like you can say go to the library and get on their computer. You know? so <laughs> is it okay to put in um, at the end, you know, the date of the next meeting, et cetera? And for more information, if they'd like, somebody'd like to be included, they could call the office. Would that be all right, or is that a, an imposition? No, I think that that's that's appropriate. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like to suggest that Julie send out the uh, code, the Zoom code a half an hour before the starts, she can easily do that. I don't see that as being an issue because I never got one and I get, and she had my email address. So for some reason, I didn't receive any, any uh, email. Oh, well, sorry about that, Verma. Sort of a group email and maybe, uh... Uh, you know, this it's a work in progress, this whole thing. Yeah. Actually, this went really well. Yeah. I, when I tried to do it, it, I, it was really hard. And uh, this, this, I think that uh, Julie and, and, uh, and Dune and, and the folks who put this together uh, really did a good yeah. job. I'm glad. If, if they decode in half an hour early, they'll just get a screen that says you're meeting. And so then people can get settled with their computers and make sure they have everything running from their end in case they have to create password or whatever to get into Zoom. Well, um, hey, Dune. Yes. Uh, just a question. You you mentioned the town plan the other uh, last meeting. Yes, that is. A time crunch on that. There's not a um, super. 
touch on that. It's it's um, and that goes to the Two Rivers um, Region Regional Committee to for the regional um, agreement. In this, it seemed that there is enough interest in that we're um this is not the time to have people feel that they input on that because of the the challenges of of meeting right now so i think that oh, i know i i was yeah, just yeah, wondering yeah. if there was a time frame to it i wasn't not no we don't have a super um um, um super deadline on that it's just something that we're okay. in the process of we felt there's um, critical adopt the local hazard mitig mitigation plan because we don't know to what extent um, FEMA will become coming into um, into play. In yeah. But yeah, it's it's um, it's out there. We didn't want to just have anyone feel like we're rushing the town plan through without a chance for the public right. to really have a, a conversation about it. Yeah. But, can I throw just a very quick question? Yeah. Um, I took a picture of my screenshot here of what this Zoom meeting is like. I wanted to check with people who have their screen their, um, on. I mean, it's very small. But I thought it might be helpful to upload that to the Facebook page to show people like, this is what our virtual select board <laughs> looks like if people want to join the meeting. It just kind of makes it a little easier to see how it goes. But a few of you have images right now <laughs> i wish i could have gotten the images to work on my screen i can see people's names but no pictures oh well yeah we see you martha <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> well i'm glad i brushed my hair <laughs> and um comedia once again for um, working with us to document um their the meeting so i i'm um so it'll be good to have this posted on the uh, on the website, and it'll um, help to uh, normalize it, I suppose, mm -hmm. perhaps. Um, so I guess with that, we're going to sign off at um, six fifty-eight. That was um, our first virtual meeting. The Rochester is moving to the future, one way or another. Thank you. Thanks. I think it went very yeah, thanks, well. everybody. See you. Thank you. Good night. Be, Be safe. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Okay. Good night. Uh, Good night.